Uh, I just had a follow-up to Mary's question about I am that I am. Um, Good, that's my joint favorite subject along with art. <laughs> so that's perfect. I, I had a different interpretation. It's, it's something that's, that statement, that phrase, that stanza or whatever has you know, been with me for a very long time. But in non-duality, I came up with a, a different interpretation, which was God pointing, I am, that I am. So we all have the sense of I am. And I interpreted God's statement as uh, pointing to that I am. Uh, so God is saying, I am that I am that you feel, in the, that each of us feel in ourselves. So that wasn't your answer. No, but it's a nice interpretation, Keith. And that's, ex yeah. that, that's exactly what God was saying. The I am, the I am in you is my presence in your heart. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Isn't that an amazing thing? the simple experience I am that every single sentient being has, every person, not just those relatively few of us that are interested in these matters, but all eight billion of us, all the animals, just that simple experience of being, that is God's presence. Isn't that amazing? And think of all the all the things that human beings have done over the years to, to find God. And right there in the Old Testament, it says, God through Moses is saying, the, I am the experience, I am your experience of I am. Just the simple feeling of being. What could be more obvious, more familiar, more simple, more intimate than the, just the feeling of being. I am that feeling of being. That is my presence in you. I have a question about faith and belief and just kind of knowing since I was very, when I was very young, my father said, God is everywhere. And I remember running around and looking under tables and chairs and saying, he's here, he's here, under the pillow. And then my father would say, yes, 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 yes. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, but then going into sort of uh, the Jewish tradition, institutionalized kind of, you know, school, Hebrew schools, whatever, wrapped in all these sort of other, you know, that, God is other. But as you have used the word one, the one, and I am, those are actually the words in those prayers. But I had a real aversion to that. The only place I felt clear that that infinite oneness was in me was in nature. And I knew that that was the same, that what was in me was in the world, and that, that all of that is this infinite oneness. And I've always felt that since I was a child. The part that has sometimes baffled me, or, or just I question, is that distinction when I am not aware of that awareness, that I'm caught up in life, and the idea that this is, or something I feel, is that that infinite oneness is infused and manifested in everything. I feel that. I feel like I know that deeply. But I get confused, I guess, or just questioning the distinction of the teaching that is that all of this is like when I'm holding a 
newborn baby or I'm holding a, you know, my steering wheel of the car, those things feel real. So I just, yes, okay. you know, there's a certain but, amount of faith. You, you, yeah, feel right. The, the newborn baby, the steering wheel of your car, your hand on the mic, your, the sight of this room, you're, you're right. All those experiences are absolutely real. Have you ever had an experience that was not real? What would an unreal experience be? How could you have an unreal experience? Well, all experience, by definition, is a real experience. It, 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 it comes from um, confusion, the understanding that the world is an illusion, and uh, the, the presumption, therefore, that, that because the world is an illusion, it is therefore unreal. That's not what's meant. When it's said in the traditional teachings that the world is an illusion, all, all it means is the world is not what it appears to be. The, the world is absolutely real. Everything is real. Everything. So how, how could there be an unreal thing? What would its status be if it was unreal? It, everything is real. But nothing is what it appears to be. So what we do here is is see through the illusory appearance to its reality. It's not even, even that is a concession to the independent existence of illusory things. If, as a concession, that we think that there are things, then we must posit their reality behind them. Let me give you an example. If we think this, the landscape in the movie is a real landscape, then to such a one, such a person, to, at least to begin with, we say, okay, you think the landscape is a real landscape. At least understand that there is a screen behind the landscape. That's true in relation to the belief that the landscape is a real landscape. But later on, we have to contradict that statement. There is no the screen. You don't have to see through the landscape to the screen, because there isn't a landscape there. What is the landscape? It's just the way the screen appears. So sometimes in, the, uh, in some of the traditional teachings, we hear that consciousness pervades everything, or that the one pervades everything. Well, okay, that's true in relation to the previous belief that matter is just this dead inert stuff and that the one is if we acknowledge its presence at all is something separate from it so as a halfway step we say no the one pervades everything but it's not true that there are no things that are pervaded by the one there's just the one appearing as things so all we are ever aware of. There's no question of sometimes being aware of the one or awareness, whatever we call it, and sometimes not being aware of it. All that we are ever aware of is the one. It would not be possible to be aware of anything else because there isn't anything else in existence to be aware of. It's like when you're watching a movie. I, you, you, you and Dean, you've watched thousands of movies. All you have ever seen is a screen. It's the same throughout your life. Think of all the millions of experiences you have had. All you have ever experienced is the one. And when I say, or you have ever experienced, you are a localization of the one through whose perceiving faculties it perceives itself as the many. So all there is is the one experiencing itself through our perceiving faculties. And it is our perceiving faculties that refract the one and make it appear as many, but never actually change its nature. It never becomes the many. It never becomes a thing or a person or a self. There are no things or people or selves. There's just the one appearing as many. I guess the distinction there is that I don't want it to be a belief in that. I want it to be an experience of that. And that comes in glimpses and 
I guess because of my aversion to belief systems of you know, my Judeo-Christian background, yeah, there's just that desire to have full, total experience of that clarity. As I say, there's certainly moments that that is clear, but there's that distinction that yeah, has to be on, I guess, faith as opposed to belief, because I don't want it to be a belief. Yes, you yes. Yeah, so, so, Yaffa, how many experiences are you having now? Are you having one experience or many experiences now? Just one. And is that a belief, or do you, do you believe that? Do you have faith in that, or do you know that? I know that. Okay. So you're having one experience now. Have you ever had more than one experience? No. Okay. So all you've ever experienced is one experience. Okay, so how would you describe the one experience you are currently having without any reference to separate parts because you're only having one experience now what would that one experience be just being here now. Do, 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 do you believe that do you have faith in that or do you know that I know that that's it yeah no I know I know and that's <laughs> exactly so every time I check in that's exactly well, it. Keep checking in. <laughs> <laughs> keep checking in until it becomes your your, your default right. experience. Right. Because you 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 have the understanding. Yeah. Yeah, you you you, yeah. you need so little suggestion from me. It it, it I, I know that you know. Be courageous. Have the courage to, 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 to live what you know. Come out of the closet. Just just you already know it. Just just live it. Take it in your hands, live it. Don't, don't be shy about it. Absolutely. It's the things that I get tripped up on. But you just told yeah. us you weren't experiencing many things, you were having one experience. So it, what is it? Are you experiencing many things? Are you having many experiences or are you having one experience? No, it, it is one. There you are. Don't yeah. keep going back to things. Things are just the way the mind carves up the one. That's good. <laughs> Perception gives the one a form, and thinking gives the one a name. And then we forget the one, and we believe that the forms and the names that perception and thought confer on the one are real in their own right. No, they're not. They're just the way that perception and thought carve up the one. Rupert, firstly, thank you so much for being here. It's, you know, it's a treat. <laughs> thank you. I, I want to clarify some maybe misunderstandings or questions. So reality is what I'm looking at right now, correct? Yes. yes. And reality is concrete, which means, which means it's it's more solid than things and people and absolutely so yes. things will come and go but reality is always here if we can see that there are things then okay. yes things come and go okay okay so yeah the how, glass how, and how, table how radical do you want me to be Sarika? Uh, totally, no, totally. Go, go, go deep totally I no, but if to you want me truth. to be totally radical there are no things that come and go they appear and disappear. Okay, right? we could say their appearance comes and go, but the things don't come and go. The appearance of things, we could say, come and go. It, when you're watching a movie, does a landscape come and go? Does anything come and go? No, it's just always the screen. That's all that's there. Is the screen coming right. and going? No. No. So what, what is real in the landscape? The screen. Sure. The screen doesn't come and go. So it's uh, if we if we uh, if if we credit the landscape with an existence of its own, yeah. independent of the screen, then as a concession to that belief, we can say the landscape comes and goes. Right. 
and that's a legitimate there, there there's a there's a a, a level of, of of teaching that that that, 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 that says this indeed I, I've I've say things come and go but sure. but here more and more in this in, in this community in this gathering we we don't need we no longer make those we rarely make those concessions because the the community of friends that have gathered around this teaching no, no longer need those concessions so that's why we're a little more like when you explain it Rupert it makes sense but when I see things I see my mind immediately says there's a table there's a cup right and I it's, still, yes. it's the that, that's, what, that's what the mind does it, the, the mind carves reality up a human mind has two faculties perceiving and thinking just so we can uh, try to imagine removing thinking and perceiving from your experience now what would remain nothing no things but con consciousness Consciousness would remain, but it would be one infinite and undifferentiated, formless whole. So thinking, these are just the two faculties of a, of a human mind. So thinking and perceiving. Perceiving, by perceiving I mean the five sense perceptions, seeing, hearing, touching, tasting and smelling. Perceiving refracts the one formless reality and makes it appear as many things. Thinking then substantiates the apparent existence of those things by giving each of them a name. A glass, right. a cup, right. a table. So this compound of thinking and perceiving weaves this illusion that there are many things and many selves and many people and many objects right. and, and there isn't. That's but just only one reality. There's ju that's just how the one reality appears when it's looked at through the lens of a human mind. And that reality is concrete. It's, it's concrete. all the time. It's, it's concrete here. in the sense that it's absolutely rock solid real. Rock solid yes. real. So think, 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 think of um, think of this absolute concrete rock solid real reality as you can't really think of this but do your best to think of it as a dimensionless presence it has no dimension think of it as a point that's as good as we think of it as a dimensionless point of pure consciousness now imagine that this dimensionless point of pure consciousness were able to assume the form of a vr headset a virtual reality headset which was made of thinking and perceiving. So this infinite formless reality assumes the form of a VR headset made of thinking and perceiving and puts it on. Suddenly, its dimensionless presence appears as time and space populated with events and people and objects. Because it's put on the VR headset of thinking and perceiving. As soon as it takes it off, you took off the VR headset. When I said, imagine removing thinking and perceiving from your experience and said, well, what remains? You just went silent and mm -hmm. the best you could say was nothing. What, what, what you really meant was dimensionless consciousness. How much space was there in the experience that was left? None. None. How much time was there? None. That's it. That's dimensionless consciousness. I'm not, I'm not talking about some abstract philosophical realm. I'm talking about what, the, what we're experiencing all the mm -hmm. time. Rupert, like in school, you like draw the number line, right? And you think one, two, three, those are real, and the infinite is somewhere far off that I'm never going to see or yeah, never going to know. Yes, You're turning it around. You're yes. saying this is infinite. Yes, it, it, infinite numbers means, are constant. It, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean innumerable dimensions. It means no dimensions. The eternal doesn't mean everlasting in time. In, everlasting in time. In time, it means ever present now. There are no dimensions in the infinite. The infinite is not endlessly vast. Hmm. No, it, 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 it is. We can't imagine. Try. You can imagine a point. Yes. Yes. Now try to imagine something, something that, that is not even a point, that has no dimensions at all. 
Yeah, Why okay. can't you imagine that? Because the only faculty through which you can imagine anything is a human mind. Right. So the human mind imposes its own limitations on everything that it knows or perceives. That's why it's not possible to think of eternity. It is not possible because the thinking perceives its own, sorry, thinking confers its own single dimension on eternity, making it appear mm -hmm. as time. It's not possible to think of eternity. In fact, if we do think of eternity, the mind comes to an end. It's not possible to perceive infinity because our sense perceptions confer their three-dimensional structure onto everything that is perceived through them. So it's not possible to perceive something with no dimensions through a VR headset that, that's constructed in three dimensions. So what I'm seeing is not the infinite? Is, is God, All right? All you're seeing is the infinite, and you are the infinite that is seeing it. So I'm seeing me? Y yes, exactly. You, the one, are just seeing yourself refracted through the lens of thought and perception. All you are seeing is the infinite. There isn't anything else to be seen. But you cannot see the infinite as infinite. You can know the infinite in the sense of right. experience. I don't see it as name and form, right? I don't well, see it as nama rupa, but it is the truth. It you, kind you, of no, the, the, infinite, the, the infinite doesn't have a name or form. The, the infinite cannot be perceived through the lens of a human mind. When consciousness right. puts on the VR headset of, of thinking and perceiving, it can no longer know itself as it essentially is. Because the VR headset that, is, that it has put on now makes itself appear to itself as time and space. So through the lens of a human mind, consciousness it cannot is. know itself as it essentially is. It can only know itself how it appears through the limitations of a human mind. That appear, that, that's what the world is. How the infinite appears when perceived through the limitations of a finite mind. And it's this beautiful thing that um, William Wordsworth said. Therefore am I still a lover of the meadows and the woods and mountains and of all that we perceive of this green earth, of all the mighty world of eye and ear. This is it. Both what they half create and half perceive. Of all that we perceive, of all the mighty world of eye and ear, both what they half create and what they half perceive. This beautiful insight. When we experience the world, we half create it and we half perceive it. So, so awareness is creating hang, this reality? Hang on, let me, let me explain Sorry. what I mean. Sir. Go so I'm going to use your orange colored glasses um, as an example for this. It, when you look at white snow through orange tinted glasses, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So. All right. So you're, 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 you're looking at you're looking the the snow is white. I'm looking at the snow now, and the snow is white. The snow, the white snow, has got nothing to do with me perceiving. Even even if I wasn't looking at the the white snow, it's a relative example. Even if I'm not looking at the white snow, it's still white snow. Sure. Yeah. But when I look at it through orange tinted glasses. <laughs> I'm half creating, half perceiving. What I'm perceiving is the white snow, but I'm creating its orange appearance. True. So what appears as orange snow, I half perceive it. Mm -hmm. I half perceive it's what I'm perceiving is the reality, what's really there, the white snow. But what I'm creating is the way it appears through the lens that I see. So this amazing insight that, that uh, William Wordsworth had that we, have that we half perceive, half create the world. What do we perceive? It's reality, the infinite. What do we create? It's appearance. What, is the, what, what are the orange glasses through which we perceive? Thinking and perceiving. Our mind. Thinking and perceiving uh, 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 is the lens through which we perceive reality. That so the conjunction of reality plus the perceiving mechanism creates the appearance of the world. It doesn't create the world, 
the world is the reality of the world it exists independent of its being perceived but the appearance of the world depends upon the perceiving faculties so what we experience of the world is this beautiful interaction between the infinite and the finite between the infinite reality and the finite mind that perceives it and the interaction of these two creates this amazing world I, yeah i know it's it's just mind blowing it, 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 it's mind blowing isn't it? it's, it's mind blowing it's mind blowing it's mind blowing, it's mind blowing. because it's so beautiful isn't it that mm. just just this this spontaneous this moment by moment interaction I know, of the infinite Robert, and the it's, finite it's create, just, it's it's it, it's mind my mind can't handle it no, it's no just, can just mind. Yeah. no can mind. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell? What is this? I just cannot. I know. OMG. You see, th th this is why we have art and literature and poetry in, in, in our culture. Because, because when, when people are touched by this understanding, even if they don't formulate it in rational terms like we do here, but when, when people are touched by th th they're so blown away by it, they just feel impelled to make something to paint something, to write something, to sing something, to dance something, yeah, to cook something, exactly. to say something that, 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 yeah, that makes it like, obvious, that expresses it, that says, look, look open your eyes, look, look understand what you're really seeing. Absolutely. That, I mean, that's, why seeing... We have, that's why we have art and poetry. You know, art should be the first thing to go in. in, in, in a, art was a lot. People made art in concentration camps. It's mm. the last thing to go. This impulse, the, someone, a mind that has been touched by this understanding, the impulse to do something, to say something, to make something that, 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 that makes mm. it available to everyone. It, it's yeah, the truth is infinitely beautiful. I just, just can't, right? <laughs>